So if you're following along, we are continuing in our, our devotional book uh, throughout the Lenten season. And tonight's family devotion is entitled, Trusted. Then Jesus said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. John chapter 19. There wasn't much Jesus could do once he was hanging on the cross. He couldn't come down. He couldn't move his hands and feet much. Even his ability to talk was probably getting lesser and lesser as time went on. But he still had a few things left to settle before his dying. As he looked down, he saw his mother and some other women standing by his cross along with his disciple John. He could see the grief in their faces. And the Son of God, though he was, Jesus was also the Son of Man, a human being. He had loved ones to provide for. Specifically, who would care for Mary? Joseph was probably long since dead. There were certainly other children in the family, Jesus' brothers and sisters, but their relationship with him hadn't always been the best, and Mary would need comfort, not I told you so, when it looked like Jesus' mission had ended in ruin. Mary herself would want to be useful, sharing comfort with others who loved Jesus also. So to her he said, Behold your son. And to John he said, Behold your mother. Jesus entrusted his mother to a disciple, that is, to the church. For all the failings and mistakes, even the sins of his followers, he still chose to give his beloved mother into their care. His love would continue to live in their community as they talked and prayed and lived together. And John fulfilled Jesus' trust in him. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home, John chapter 19. What an hour this is. That Jesus should trust the church with the care of those he loves so much. For he continues to do this even to this day. As he trusts us with the poor, the sick, the lonely, the hurting, the unwanted. To say to us, he says, behold your mother, behold your son, your daughter, your brothers and sisters. He gives us one another to care for. For all of us who trust in him are his beloved, needed, needy family. And he gives us to one another. What a really beautiful scene that is from the cross when you think about it and you hear that story as Jesus is dying and he looks down and there he sees Mary, his mother. Can you, you know, you, you really, it's, it's hard to comprehend, you know, what Jesus must have been thinking. It's, it's hard to comprehend because, I mean, we don't know the torture and the hell literally that he was going through that was being placed on him by our sinfulness at that moment. But we do know that he was God and we do know that he was man and in his man human nature, he was very worried about about his mother rightfully so rightfully so I would say who's going to take care of her as far as we know tradition tells us that Joseph was long gone and as the lesson that we just heard our devotion for tonight the other brothers in, uh, in the family and sisters too didn't really like Jesus too much they didn't believe in him until later on after he rose from the dead duh hello but anyways um, they didn't get it so who's going to care for poor Mary so Jesus sees John and he says hey John Take care of mom. And mom, take care of John too. Hidden deep within this counter is something so powerful. You see, for many years at first glance, I would look at this passage and I would say, oh yeah, Jesus is just simply taking care of his mom. This is a beautiful thing and it shows his human nature from the cross. But hidden deep within inside this interaction is something so grand and so powerful that goes way beyond our heads at times that sometimes we fail to grasp what Jesus is really doing. We fail to see that Jesus is actually giving us a vision of his church. He's actually showing us what the mandate is all about that he gave the night before on Monday, Thursday. He's actually telling us as the church, as his people, how we are supposed to carry out our lives and live. We are being, being given the vision of a church, a church that is a refuge, a church that is full of love, a church of acceptance, a church of kindness, a church of compassion, a church of forgiveness. A church that provides refuge for those who are weary, refuge for those who are worn, and strength for those who are broken. Jesus is truly showing us at this very moment from the cross, from the cross, during his death, during his suffering, during his torture, during the shedding of his blood, while he's dying for you and for me, he is literally showing us from the cross how to continue to live out his mandate to love each other as I have loved you. The mandate 
mandate we hear carried out from St. Paul in our lesson for tonight, bear one another's burdens, and in this way you fulfill the law of Christ. And I ask people, what is the law of Christ? So I ask you tonight, what is the law of Christ? Love. Love is the law of Christ. It's in living together in the community of the church and in fellowship. A church as a refuge, as a safe place, as a place of love and forgiveness. That we truly fulfill that law of Christ, which is love. No greater love has this than for a man to lay down his life for a brother. And of course we know the scripture, three words, God is love. And before our eyes, Jesus fulfills this scripture tonight. You know, it's important. As these words of Good Friday ring to us now on Monday, Thursday, Jesus is showing us and instructing us on how to love each other, on how to be a church. And sometimes that's hard to do these days. So many churches get very comfortable in their pews. I don't like people to be comfortable. I like making people uncomfortable because the moment we get comfortable in our pews, we forget about the mission that Jesus has set before us. We forget about the mandate to love one another. We think it's all about us. And we begin to, to get selfish and greedy with what the church is really about. So being uncomfortable is a good thing. In fact, Jesus never promised us comfort. Just ask him when he's hanging on the cross. I guarantee you he would have said, this ain't comfortable. In fact, he does tell us we'll have troubles in this world, but he gives us peace. So Jesus shows us in his word tonight, in his action, what this church is supposed to be, be like. We are supposed to love the broken. We are supposed to love the sick. We are supposed to love the hurting and the wounded. We are called to love the mentally ill. And we are called to care for those who are in trouble. The church is a refuge, a refuge of peace. In fact, Dietrich Bonhoeffer says so beautifully that the church is where the you know, Christianity is truly experienced. It's in fellowship as we come together as the body of Christ and as a community where we truly experience the fullness of Christianity, the fullness of God's grace and his love and his mercy as we share that with each other, as we share that with the people that come in that we don't even know yet and the ones that are yet to come in that we still don't know about. This is where the church operates. But this is the next part. It's kind of hard because he also says we're supposed to love the homeless, the homosexuals, the foreigner that God sends from outside our gates. And boy, is that a tough one in our country today. We're to love the sinners, the prisoners, the unbeliever, the woman who had an abortion. We are called to love all of those people because you know what? Their sins are no greater than ours. We are poor, miserable sinners ourselves deserving nothing but the cross that Jesus took on himself. And for us to do anything but to love them, to provide refuge for them, to provide care for them, to provide comfort for them. Well, that's John right sinful. And that's not what God wants from a church. But that's why Jesus died for us. To take on our sinfulness. To take on our grossness and ugliness, our wretchedness, our brokenness, our woundedness to take it all on himself, to set us free from sin, death, and the devil once and for all, to show us how much he loves us and to continue to pour out that love into our lives. It has been said, the church is not a museum of saints, but a hospital for sinners. I want to buy a sign and put it on the church door. Have you ever seen those signs on doors when you walk in that says, Help Wanted? I want one that says sinners wanted. Because I want to be a part of a church full of sinners. Because people who can admit that they are sinners admit they need a savior. And those are people who are filled with the love and the grace and the mercy of Jesus. The same compassion that Jesus showed to us and his mother and John from the cross. You know, it's funny, when I think of the church being a refuge, and oddly after the events of this week, <laughs> I always get one picture in my mind. Back in the medieval days and in the early church, it was very true that there was a policy in many places called sanctuary provided by the church. That if you were a criminal or you had done something wrong, you could run into the church and claim sanctuary, and as long as you never left the church premise, you would never be arrested and you would never be prosecuted. And so you know what story I'm thinking of, right? The Hunchback of Notre Dame. 
and Quasimodo. Every time I think of the church being a refuge, I think of this poor man who was made fun of because of the way he looked, who wasn't loved by his community because he was an outcast, who was different, who was shunned, running into that church, that cathedral, shouting sanctuary, sanctuary, because he knew with inside those doors he could find refuge, because he knew with inside those doors he would not be judged. He knew with inside those doors he would find forgiveness and love and mercy and grace, first shining forth from the cross that Jesus gives, and secondly shining forth through the people that sit inside the pews and worship as the community of faith in that place. See, we, we are those people every day we come to this place, every time we come into this place. We are Quasimodo. We are the broken. We are the hurt. We are the sinful. We are the lost. We are the broken. And every time we come into this place, we encounter the overwhelming love of God that shines forth from his cross. But not only do we encounter that at Christ Lutheran Church, and you would agree with me, we are a family, and we encounter that in each other. And one of the things that I think that makes this place so special is we are poised to be one of the greatest, most powerful refuges throughout this city. We are poised. We are ready. God's church is a place with sinners, with broken people, with the wounded who have been loved by him so that they can love like him as a place of refuge and refreshment. Let me say that again a little differently. God's church is a place filled with you and me. All the same, broken and sinful, loved and forgiven, so that we might love and forgive those who need that love and forgiveness. You see, the reality is, tonight we gather and we worship, we're forgiven and fed, and the church is alive in us. The church is alive in us. You know why? Because we are the church. That's what happened when Jesus looked down from the cross on that Good Friday at his disciple and his mother and realized that for this Christian faith to continue to grow, the church had to be a family, a refuge, a place of forgiveness and love. In the name of Jesus, amen.